So I was out shopping in one of our local thrift stores, Value Village, recently, and I spotted something in the houseware section that I thought might be something I could turn into a wood stove. And no, it wasn't an IKEA utensil strainer, rather it was a vegetable steamer. So I know that there are commercially made stoves that look very much like this. Let's see if we can turn this vegetable steamer, which I got for 99 cents, into a functional wood stove. All right, as you can see, this is the uh, first time I'm going to use this. So it's more of an experiment as, as much as anything. Um, if it works out, it may be something you want to look for. Like I said, they're very inexpensive. Now, what makes me think this is going to work is a couple of things. One, as you can see, it's just full of holes. It's got holes everywhere that uh, should allow a significant amount of air to flow through. It is made of stainless steel and it has one inch little legs on the bottom that would normally sit in your pot for steaming so it'll put a little bit of water underneath it. And it's also fairly compact. Now, you could open it all the way up and build a big fire like this or maybe you could hold it in a, a smaller diameter like that and that's probably what I'm going to do once I get this started inside. Now the one thing that this does not come with is some way of suspending a pot over it. So I brought my inexpensive Coglin's uh, grill that I'm going to suspend a pot over and I have one other thing but uh, let's get the fire started first and then I'll show you. So I have some little bit of uh, fir twig, not fir, spruce twigs here, a little bit of hardwood twigs here and then some maple chunks here and it's kind of old, a little bit punky. Um, you know, one of the things I was uh, thinking about was we have had a long dry summer and it's prevented me from coming out and doing tests like this on little wood stoves out in the woods. But over the last few days we've had torrential rains which have been good. We needed them. We really did. And the fire ban is now off. The downside of that of course is everything is wet. So I have a little bit of birch bark and uh, I, I know it sounds like I'm making my excuses even before we get started, but let's see. I'm sure I can get a fire started. I guess the question is, well, I, can I keep it going? All right. I'm going to be using a new knife that I'll talk about at another time. I haven't even checked to see if it's got a, yeah, sufficient spine on it to get a fire started. And I'd say it did. Get these little bit of twigs in there. Close the sides up a little bit. Some more twigs on it. So I'm just kind of learning as, as we go here what this is uh, the best way to use this. Maybe a top down burn. Today it's just a traditional bottom up burn, small and then larger and then fuel size. A little smoky, but that's expected if wood is a little bit wet. Oh, it seems to be holding together. I was a little afraid that the sides would drop down, but it hasn't. It's interesting. I can see air being drawn in. Hopefully I'll be able to show you that in a minute from the sides. Almost like a wood gasifier. So it's drawing air in all the way around the outside. Yeah. Quite a bit of heat there. my Coglin's grill over it and that will work that is one option now you, you can probably see from the flames that it's a uh, is uh, the tiniest of breeze so ideally I would have some type of a windbreak and I'm a bit on, on a rock where well, you can see it I'm on on a rock surface here a little bit exposed not not ex excessively but I could have taken the time to gather a couple of the rocks like a wood, a circle fireplace and build up a little bit of a rock wall to keep it from too much wind affecting it. 
But in addition to this cog lens, I do have something else I want to show you. Now, it's not about this second product. It's more about the concept of how it might work with this twig stuff. So I'll take that out of the way. What I have, and I'll have to show you this in more detail, because I know it's kind of aimed down low, is a little uh, tripod. Inexpensive tripod that I picked up on eBay. Adjustable chain link. Packable, very lightweight. And it would appear, you can probably get that down just a little lower. There, right in the flame. And that seems to be working pretty good. See if I can give you some close-ups on it. All right, so now you can see the flames. It's burning quite nicely in the bottom of that pan. One of the things I wanted to do by setting it up on rock was to see if there was going to be any ashes dropping through. I suspect not because the, the holes are so small that uh, maybe a little ash, but certainly no live coals or embers going to drop through. Not to say that it won't get hot underneath that, so you still have to be careful about what surface you put it on, which is the reason, even with the fire ban being lifted, I wanted to use it on a rock surface just for safety's sake. But it appears to be working fairly good. Now, one thing that I'll have to watch for is how much ash will actually build up in the bottom of this and will it start to clog up the holes and prevent it from uh, getting enough airflow. But at this point, it seems to be working quite well. All right, so I'm going to show you that little tripod, and we'll talk about that tripod in a future vi video. But you can see the tripod, probably see my camera tripod behind it, but it's just each leg has three sections that screw together, screws into a top plate, has a chain and a pin to allow you to adjust the length and a hook to hold your pot. Now it's not very big, wouldn't go do to put it over a large fire, but over a small fire like this it seems to be just about perfect. Hey, right, that water's going to heat up, I'm going to make some coffee with that. I'm going to bring you back when we're finished. Okay, that turned out pretty good, you know. It, I've only used it the once. It's a slightly discolored as you expect it to be. It has no problems opening and closing. No warping taking place in it so far. One fire is not enough to determine how it's going to work in the long term. Uh, I don't see any gumming up of the gears or anything else. I have no reason to think this isn't going to work out quite well if you're looking for something very inexpensive, very effective, at least something to try. Now, here's something I didn't show you before. I had this packed in it when I arrived. That is a bag of hardwood pellets. And inside, I've got a little homemade fire starter. You can see it's got the green wax on it, and that's a piece of uh, sawdust and wax fire starter that I make and I have in chunks. And what I did with this when I was packing it was put it down inside of the stove close the stove up and now I've got a complete fire all ready to go. It's completely packed. Now, I prefer to use wood that I find out in the wild and uh, you know, I'll continue to do that, but I have discovered that wood pellets are an effective fuel to bring along with you. On those days that you can't find enough dry fuel to get a fire going, a piece of that wax fire starter and some wood pellets uh, make an, an, an effective alternative. The other thing I haven't tried with this yet is an alcohol stove like a Trangia and I suspect it'll work very well with that and act like its own windbreaker with the sides up on it and the Trangia sitting in the center may be able to even get a pot right over the top. If not, I can still use the other method that I used for suspending a pot over the top. So the upside, very inexpensive, very effective. The downside, you have to have some way of suspending a pot over it. Or Either a pot to, to grill or, or like a grill for cooking meat, I guess, as well. Thought I'd bring you this inexpensive option and something you may want to give it a try. Uh, but keep checking the channel out. I have other ones coming. And if you enjoy this video, you may consider subscribing to my channel. But in the meantime, look at this. I don't know if you can see this behind me. I'm in a new little place so to, on Quarry Lake, which is still in the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Wilderness area, but it's a little different. I haven't been on this specific spot before, and I'm just loving it in this late afternoon sun. Okay, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.